Hirokazu Koreeda, arguably the coziest director ever, is also arguably one of the most important directors working in modern Japanese cinema. Prior to his recent slew of chart-topping projects, which have garnered him quite a bit of international acclaim, Koreeda worked for several decades in television and cinema. He began his film career directing documentaries, releasing titles like 1991's Lessons from a Calf, his first film, which deals with a class of children who raise a cow, and 1994's August Without Him, which chronicles the final two years in the life of the first Japanese man to publicly announce having contracted AIDS. Shortly after this project, Koreeda rapidly moved from non-fiction into narrative-driven drama, if anything was brought over in his transition, beginning with his dramatic debut in 1995's Mabaroshi, it is the very visceral reality that Koreeda lends his characters' stories via their situations. Koreeda isn't the type to make an action-packed summer blockbuster, with his works instead usually falling more under descriptions like calm and introspective. Admittedly, he's made heavier films like 2017's The Third Murder, but these are less over-the-top action films and more like literary, meditative takes on the darker parts of humanity. This is probably due to that background in documentary filmmaking, where Koreeda was simply filming the daily lives of certain individuals, then using the resultant footage to form a one or two hour narrative. His fictional films bear this atmosphere of realism to this day. Concerning his method of pacing and writing, which are often cited as slow but captivating, Koreeda said, quote, In order to convey a deep sense of sorrow, you need levity. The human condition takes place within the boundaries of humor and sadness. That's who we are. We all live in that in-between realm. This is also something I'm very conscious of when I'm writing my screenplays. To not make it too humorous or too sad. If you portray a serious story in a serious manner, nobody's going to listen to or watch that story." End quote. Kore Eda has seen a good bit of success since his major debut in 1995, but in recent years we've been seeing something of a renaissance for the director. 2004's Nobody Knows and 2008's Still Walking made waves both inside and outside of his home country, but between 2015 and 2019, so far, Koreeda has released one film per year, with each successive film garnering more and more attention. Today's subject, Our Little Sister, seems as good a place as any to jump into Koreeda's recent output, given the accolades it received and how much international attention it gained. Another commonality beyond truthful writing within Koreeda's projects is the sheer beauty held within each frame. Our Little Sister is only the second film to cinematographer Mikia Takimoto's name, the first being Koreeda's own prior effort, like Father Like Son. And despite this seeming to be an early point in his career, it would be hard for us to argue that Takimoto is an amateur by any means. The film was shot on location in Kanagawa, with Takimoto and Koreeda making it look easy to conjure up so much natural beauty and transmute it to film. The film is based on Umimachi Diary, or Seaside Town Diary, a manga by Akimi Yoshida, which ran for nine volumes between 2007 and 2018, with the film arriving when the manga sat at seven volumes in length. It focuses on three sisters, Sachi, Yoshino, and Chika, who live together in the seaside town of Kamakura. They live in their late grandmother's house, where they have remained as a trio since both their father and mother eloped with other partners. Our Little Sister was released in Japan on June 13th, 2015, amidst a multi-year festival circuit. The film saw international release in theaters in the UK on April 15th, 2016, and on a limited number of screens in the US and Canada in July 2016, with a rolling release schedule lasting the remainder of 2016 in these territories. The movie was generally received favorably by critics, and made a decent amount of money at about $15 million globally. Most scenes were shot masterfully by Takimoto in an 80-year-old house in Kamakura over the course of a year. The owners of the house allowed the film crew to use the entire place as it was, furthering Koreeda's signature realistic immersion, with the kitchen being the only set built for the film. Before photography commenced, the four main actresses even went about the daily duties that sisters in their character's situation might, such as weeding and cooking together, in order to better enter the mindset needed for more natural chemistry on set. This helped to heighten their familiarity not only with each other, but also with the house. 
Haruka Ayase is typically a comedic actor, though here she plays Sachi, the eldest and more serious of the sisters. Koreeda said upon meeting her that he was struck by how classic and old-fashioned she was in person as compared to her acting persona, and that he saw she could portray Sachi despite the protests of a number of others. Magami Nagasawa, who plays the middle sister, Yoshino, is primarily known in Japan for television dramas and voice work. Fans of anime might recognize her as the woman behind Umi Matsuzaki, the lead in Goro Miyazaki's 2011 film From Up on Poppy Hill. Kaho, who plays Chika, the younger sister, is again known primarily for TV dramas in Japan. Among her numerous TV and film credits is Shion Sono's 2017 Amazon project Tokyo Vampire Hotel, where she played the lead. Despite being only 16 at the time of filming, Suzu Hirose, who plays the young stepsister, Suzu, already had an extensive career in TV dramas advertising, audio dramas, and radio. For her performance, Hirose was awarded one of the eight Newcomer of the Year awards given at the 2016 Japanese Academy Awards. Speaking of awards, our little sister held the highest number of nominations at the 2016 Academy Awards, with 12, including those for Best Screenplay, Lead Actress, Supporting Actress, and Score, among others. Koreeda went on to win Best Director, while Mikiya Takimoto won Best Cinematography, and Norikiyo Fuji won Best Lighting Direction. Oh, and not to mention that Our Little Sister took home Best Picture of 2015. The film was also an official competitor for the Palme d'Or, the most highly regarded award at the Cannes Film Festival in 2015. This film, in a way, doesn't really have a huge amount of plot. In simplest terms, it's the tale of three adult siblings taking in their half-sister following the death of their father. The film opens by establishing the relations between the three, Sachi not wanting to settle down for love and being an adulterer, Yoshino moving up in her workplace yet finding no true happiness, and Chika being too young to have ever known their father. We then learn that Suzu's mother, the widow of the deceased father, forces too much responsibility on Suzu, rather than acting like an adult. This means that Suzu has gone through a premature maturation compared with her sisters who were allowed to age more naturally. As a result, the sisters take Suzu under their wing to try and save her from the overbearing nature of the mother. The bulk of the film centers around the day-to-day -day lives of the four sisters over the course of Suzu's first year in Kamakura. Chika and her boyfriend with the hella good hair, who work together at a sports supply store, help Suzu join the local soccer team. The whole family frequently dines at one of two local restaurants, run by an elderly couple whose health and relationship become a subplot in and of themselves. The film takes breaks from narrative progression in favor of scenes centered around the plight of dealing with a spider cricket in the bathroom, or the reverence of storing up plum wine and examining the aged jars from years and generations past. Honestly, not much happens in the framework of a traditional narrative structure throughout the majority of the film. Instead, Koreeda favors examining the little things in the women's lives, the preparation of a seasonal local delicacy, for example, which in turn leads to the realization that, though Suzu has never been to the hometown of the others, her later father frequently prepared the same dish. Through these interwoven emotional touchstones, the narrative of the film is allowed to progress. Suzu and Sachi bond, despite being the furthest apart, over the creation of food, and through the shared perspectives of the four sisters, Sachi attempts to make peace with their mother. As with the father's adulterous nature being shared with Sachi, her own apprehensions about being a bad daughter manifest in her mother. This realization helps serve as Sachi's character arc, though for the most part, the film is concerned more with how the sisters bond over their shared and separate elements. At a local fireworks festival, we also learn that Suzu feels unwanted by her family in spite of her sisters asking her to move in. Suzu and a boy that she has been accused in school of liking discuss their mutually unwanted nature within their respective families. When she arrives home, the others have all dressed up and they have their own fireworks celebration, as all of them had to work during the proper ceremony. It's moments like these that fill the story of Our Little Sister, making up the bulk of the film's emotional narrative. A tale about the passing of the seasons and the need to learn to live with our families before we're left out in the cold by memory and time. 
If we've discussed anyone on the show yet that's similar to Koreeda, it would be Shunji Iwai, with his introspective character studies. While both men film extremely beautiful scenes highlighted by well-fleshed-out characters, there is a distinct stylistic difference between the two. Iwai tends to favor striking visuals, where the enormity of a circumstance is slowly revealed as we see how small our character is compared to their surroundings. Iwai is also apt to use violence liberally in some of his works to drive home visual and emotional points. By contrast, Koreeda films scenes as though they are naturalistic oil paintings. The characters amongst the scenery merely happen to be passing through, with the nebulous forces of the world affecting them more than the direct actions of others. Where Iwai focuses on human relationships from a very proactive standpoint, with the relationships evolving due to a specific incident, Koreeda will examine a set of relationships in a film over an extended period, exploring how these people interact with and without the catalyzing events of an Iwai picture. Their two styles are complementary to one another in their methods of exploring the human spirit and how it interacts with the world, so fans of one or the other should be able to appreciate both men's work, but they're different enough in execution to sometimes feel worlds apart. We mentioned earlier that Our Little Sister serves as a good jumping off point for Koreeda because it is a film without a beginning or end, quite literally a slice of life. The film shows a year of these women's lives played out with the only fanfare being that which comes naturally through moments shared with loved ones. In the same way, central events of the film will often happen off screen, such as the deaths of the film, which signaled the beginning and end of our observation. On screen, we witness the aftershock of these events and realize, as the women wander down the beach without much direction, that the waves these circumstances have created will never truly end. These women will keep walking until they have become as aged as the woman from the restaurant, and then they pass on, leaving behind their legacy, represented here through the recipe Sachi's mother taught her, and the old stores of plum wine kept long beyond the death of its creator. The entire movie can be seen as the waves created by the unseen father, his residual influence pervading the sisters' lives, with their mother adding to the waves in the tide pool that is Kamakura by appearing unannounced. As food elicits memories of a father and a grandmother, so does the youngest sister elicit memories of the father, and through an acceptance and bonding with what he left behind in the form of siblings, both Suzu and the other women can learn to accept themselves as well as a father they either despised or didn't know very well. Sachi's evolving view of her father, by Koreeda's own admission, is actually informed by the passing on of his father, and his becoming a father in the time since. He states that now having a daughter of his own has made him re-evaluate what he held to be the more negative aspects of his relationship with his own father. This theme of parental absence and the attempts by someone else to fill in the gap left behind is a constant throughout Koreeda's works. He used TV films to grow close with his own mother as a child, as he says they could not afford theater tickets. In a similar way, Koreeda uses food to bond the family. Certain items recall certain losses. His father, on the other hand, had been a soldier in the occupation forces of Manchuria during World War II, and was sent to a Siberian forced labor camp by the Soviet army following Japan's surrender. Koreeda says that he is attached to character studies rather than event-driven fiction, and attributes his interest in the original manga to this aptitude. Additionally, he stated in an interview with the Village Voice that the author of the manga gave him free reign over the film's story, and that this allowed him to contribute a number of his own scenes and even improvise many, with the script not being complete until after shooting had begun. To research the sisterly dynamic and make their familial chemistry as real as possible, Koreeda interviewed four sets of three sisters each. This film, about four abandoned children, mirrors his own international watershed moment of Nobody Knows, from 2004. In this earlier film, four young children are left to their own devices in an apartment, and made to fend for themselves by their neglectful mother. Following the ensuing 11 years of growth and maturation as a filmmaker, it seems only natural to have four sisters here be not children, but adults. Nobody Knows and Our Little Sister also shared the production habits of scripting while the film was shot, and a shooting schedule spanning a year or more. 
In a word, Hirokazu Koreeda is a rare director. Subtle, soft-spoken in terms of narrative and theming, Our Little Sister is a slow film that never feels slow thanks to his masterful direction, the beautiful visuals, and the impeccable acting. Truly, it's not difficult to see why such a down-tempo film was able to garner so many nominations and wins at one of the Japanese film industry's biggest events. It may not be a thrill ride, but it doesn't need to be one in order to be heartfelt and poignant. Let us know below what you think about Our Little Sister and where it fits in with Kore Eda's overall filmography. Is this truly one of his greats, or is it too slow and meandering compared with his more controlled films? And be sure to tune in next time when we'll be looking at perhaps an even more understated film from this very director.